We're joined now by NASA astronauts Dr. Kate Rubens and Victor Glover from the International Space Station. Guys, I have to start, if I can, everyone down here talking about that historic alignment between uh, Jupiter and Saturn. Did you guys catch a glimpse of that up there? What did you think? Yeah, we actually called. I was about to go to sleep last night, and I called down to Mission Control to say, hey, uh, you know, I, I was talking to my sister. She was telling me where she could see it in Nevada, and, and we thought about it. We're like, and we're going once around the Earth every 90 minutes. We're going to need some, uh, some trajectory data and some pointing assistance. So they took a look, and actually where we, where we would have been able to see it on station is, is blocked by some structure. So unfortunately, we did not have a good viewing opportunity in space, but we really hope that everybody on the ground is following it. Uh, it just sounds like an amazing event. Talking about that view of our world from where you are, such an astonishing sight. Is it a little extra perspective knowing some of the difficulties and chaos that everyone is dealing with down here right now, guys? Absolutely. You know, uh, looking out over that, that out, out the cupola windows at all of those places that I've never been and, and all of those familiar places that look so different from 250 miles up, you know, it's a, a reminder that there are people all over the place going through all kinds of things, and, and it is a privilege and an honor to be here. Uh, but we, you know, are constantly thinking about the folks that are down there dealing with whatever they may be dealing with uh, as we bring 2020 to a close. But hopefully we're on our way towards things getting a lot better for a lot of people everywhere. And we hope so. Dr. Rubens, I know you're doing some important work up there. Everyone's doing some important work up there. But you had a recent uh, discovery with the radishes, harvesting some of those radishes. It might seem pretty simple, but this was a pretty significant experiment when it comes to some of the work that you're doing up there. Yeah, this is one of the most fun things we get to do up here. It's actually, it's pretty amazing uh, when humans go into isolation like we are. Uh, you know, we, we can see the earth, we feel close to it, but at the same time, we are pretty isolated up here. And one of the things you miss the most after a long duration voyage is things like plants and nature. It sounds crazy, but just like wind and rain, we miss that. So getting a chance to see these plants up here was actually incredible. When I would open the habitat, every crew member on station would stop by. It's also really interesting from a scientific perspective. So we chose them because they resemble Arabidopsis, which is a model organism for plants. Uh, we can see uh, what the changes are in leaf growth and root growth. We're taking gene expression to analyze what the RNA is doing in these plant samples. Uh, and then, of course, harvesting in them at the end. This is also a crop of interest for us in the future. They grow so fast, uh, and they're, they're incredibly nutritious. And so scientists are thinking about planning for long duration. How are we going to feed humans on the way to Mars? And this is all part of that scientific program. So fascinating. And, Victor, you're a U.S. Navy commander, and you've now piloted the NASA SpaceX crew to the ISS, such a historic mission for so many reasons, and you've always credited STEM along your way as being something that's an inspiration. Can you talk about that? Well, you know, I, I believe that engineering is, is simply taking those basics basic physics principles and applying them to real world problems and so your ability to analyze or break things down into simple components and then synthesize answers out of those same simple components uh, is, is what you learn in a, in a STEM education and I think those things are important for all of the challenges that we're facing nowadays but it definitely is important for for doing something like what we're doing up here on the on the International Space Station and I'll say Dan the ride up on on Crew Dragon Resilience was amazing I uh, didn't do a whole lot of flying. Uh, it's designed to to do most of the things it needs to get to the space station and dock safely automatically, and it performed very well. Uh, but it was still an amazing ride, most amazing thing I've done. A pilot we both know had had that exact question, and, and for both of you, Dr. Rubens uh, and and Victor, you guys are trailblazers in your own regard. Dr. Rubens, with your research, Victor, the first African American to spend extended period of time on the ISS. What, are your, what is your advice to all those young people out there who just look up at the stars and just dream of being where you are right now? Yeah, we, I get this question a lot. I, I'm sure Victor does too. And, and part of my advice is um, I, I never let it hold me back thinking, oh, I'm one of only a few females in the room. I, I just do my thing. Like I, I just do what I'm going to do. I've got the right to be there. I'm a smart person. I, I blaze ahead and I sort of ignore the fact uh, that I may be uh, not completely represented in every field that I am. And I, I think that's helpful. I think uh, a lot of uh, young girls are told you can't do science, you can't do math. Um, and we just know that's not true. And so I think uh, just 
being assertive, having the confidence to pursue your dreams, finding something you want to do, that you love to do, that you want to get up every day and do. And, uh, and I think for a lot of young girls, that's starting to be things like science and engineering and robotics. Uh, and I'm just really, I'm excited to see that and what our future generations have. And I've got four daughters and I really hope they were listening to exactly what she said. <laughs> But, you know, it, I, I also have some, some things I say everywhere that I go, no matter what your goal is to do this or, or anything else, to, to be gritty, or as I, I'll say lately, to be resilient, to be a lifelong learner, and to be a good teammate. And I think those things will pay dividends no matter what course you choose in life. Those things will help you to find and also have a good, healthy definition of success. And, and you touched on it a little bit, but this is an important moment uh, for space exploration. American ships are flying from America again and able to get our astronauts up there to the ISS. What are some of the things that you guys are working on now that are going to pave the way for future missions, maybe back to the moon or even further out to Mars? Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful sight. So I didn't have the privilege of arriving uh, on resilience with these guys, but I was able to open the hatch and greet them. And it's an incredible. We see it every day, so we can see uh, their spacecraft from the cupola. And I I have to take a moment every now and then and just look out. It's beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful spaceship. Uh, and it's incredible to know that we have this launch capability again. Some of the things that we're doing for exploration are actually really looking at our lunar goals. So we have um, parts of spacesuits up here. We're looking at subsystems in spacesuits, trying to understand how we're going to cool these spacesuits on the lunar surface. Uh, we're looking at long term storage of these spacesuits, what's going to happen to the water loops. Um, so we've got a lot of different environmental life support uh, things that we're testing. Uh, in microgravity and long duration in space, and then a lot of different uh, subparts of a spacesuit that's eventually going to be tested up here on the space station, not during our increment, um, but definitely in the next few years, we're going to be actually taking that outside into vacuum and testing the full uh, lunar suit to see how everything checks out. What are the plans for Christmas and spending the holidays 250 miles up above Earth? Yeah, uh, good question, Dan. We, we are going to have dinner and fellowship like we do i mean we we are a family up here and so expedition 64 kate and mike shannon soichi and the sergeys we all enjoy being around each other and we're going to celebrate together we'll be able to speak to our families uh as well and also i, I spend some time thinking about and praying for all the folks that don't get to be at home with their loved ones you know we understand that we relate to it uh and we'll be thinking about them as well all right, guys. Well, thank you so very much, Dr. Kate Rubens and Victor Glover, for your service up there and everything that you're doing right now for space exploration and setting this great example for all of us back down here on Earth. Thanks, Dan. It was great talking to you. Stay safe and happy holidays to everybody down there.